Hello everyone and welcome to my Bandos prep video for God Wars. Are you ready? Episode 1. This video I'm pretty much going to cover things like your gear, your inventories, brief strategies and pretty much all of it is just little reminders to make sure you've got it for when God Wars is out. First off, I'm going to talk about the requirements. So there isn't particularly anything you need apart from 60 strength or 60 agility and the quest line to get to the area for the entrance of God Wars. I do recommend getting 70 attack, 70 strength, which you do need 70 strength to get past the door where you bash it with a hammer, 70 defense, 70 hit points, and you need a hammer to get in, so don't forget the hammer. 90 combat stats is probably more preferable, including 90 magic for the defense, but that's really up to you. If you guys want to spend the time to put the effort in, then you'll get more rewards, especially against getting crashed by people in void. You'll be pretty easy to get crashed in flat 70 stats. Now I'm going to move on to the gear. So this setup you can see here is the, you know, just the casual defensive attacker. So you're not sacrificing much defense for strength there. You could do uh, like void and that, which I'll show soon. But that is the general, I guess, setup there. Uh, you could use a rune defender. There is a lot of different setups. And I'm not going to cover any welfare setups, but they're really just preferable. So that's just ragging it using crappy gear. The next setup I'm going to talk about is Void Melee. Now in the picture I don't actually have the Void Helm yet, so just, just think that's a Void Helm. Um, yeah, that, that that's a Void Helm. <laughs> so using Void you're definitely going to do a lot more damage and it's going to be a lot better for I guess anti-crashing or if you're going to crash people. Um, you don't really sacrifice any magic defense, that's a plus, but you do sacrifice a lot of other defensive stats so just keep that in mind um it might be good like especially in a free-for-all mass i'll definitely be voiding it so now i'm going to talk about the tank setup now the most common tank setup that used to be used like back in the day actually like 2007 2008 like around that time i was guthans now this was done by guthan healing on the mage minion when he needed health most of the time because i believe it had less defense was the reason for that um, when you do have full HP, you can just leave your Guthans on, just keep whacking it and hope you heal up. But you can swap to a DFS and Whip, like he's showing now. Um, it does increase your defense by quite a lot. Now you can see they are magic defense is still relatively low, so you are going to be getting owned by the mage minions. So I guess that's another reason why you could maybe kill it, but it does spawn pretty quick, so I don't know. Uh, you could use a Ring of Life, but I guess that would be more in a, a welfare setup. Um, but it's all personal preference. If the imbued rings do come out, then definitely an Onyx Ring Eye. That will be that'll be the go-to ring. Now, when you're tanking, make sure to communicate with your team. Uh, if you do need to heal at the end of the kill, make sure they leave at least one minion for you to heal off, because you can pray against it, obviously. And that is where a lot of your Guthan healing will be done. Obviously, you'll need to brew up if you start the kill, you know, like half health, it could get interesting. So the last thing I'm going to talk about is the inventory setups. Now on the left, you've got the tank setup, which is using obviously brews, where you're going to be just brewing up if you can't heal. Uh, I'm using a D Halley in these setups here because I do prefer the D Halley, but you can use whatever spec web you like. Uh, you could bring a DDS, that's probably what a lot of people are going to be using, but I like the massive hits with the D Halley. It seems a lot more accurate. Uh, the Guthan Spear is in there for healing, so you'll be using the Guthan Spear to heal, obviously. And then we'll move on to the attacking roll. It's pretty much the same thing without a Guthan Spear. If you're wondering, the Zami book is for getting kill count, so you've got a Zami item. You can use whatever you want, like Zami Cloak or whatnot. So, you know, take whatever you uh, take whatever you think would be best for you, um, which suits. You can just drop the book when you get in size. That's handy, as with the hammer. But for the welfare setup, it's pretty much the same thing, just welfare, like, Pretty much that's what it is. It's uh, cheap. It's with sharks instead of brews, but I wouldn't recommend using that setup. The Bone to Peach's tabs in there are extremely handy. They cost about 1.5k to 2k at the moment, so they do end up probably making you money if you get a drop, obviously, if you stay in there. Peach is healed for 8, so that's 3 bones equals a shark, so that's 2k for 1 heal. That's massive, especially since they stack, so don't forget those. Now the last thing I'd like to put in is if you want to get some extra strength uh, when you've got full health whatnot, you can bring a fighter torso. I did have a clip with a fighter torso on, but it's exactly the same as the first setup I showed for the gear, where it's just the, uh, the Carol's top, so yeah. That's all for the prep vid people. I hope I've helped you and good luck with your God Wars. Stay tuned for episode 2, Are You Ready? Sarah Derman. <laughs>